Good evening. Welcome to the March School Board meeting. The first item on our agenda tonight is approval of the school board minutes. The regular school board meeting of February 11, 1992. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Okay, those stand approved. And the special school board meeting of March 3, 1992. Any corrections or additions? Okay, those minutes are approved. Our next item is comments by the middle school representatives. Hello. Um, in the middle school, we are beginning our individual, or excuse me, our interdisciplinary unit on the last week of month mo of the last week of the month, and. Um, <coughs> We recently had an, the drive for Archangel, the sister city, in which our school was designated to bring in boxes of raisins that would be shipped to Archangel. And due to a slow start, we will be continuing for another week. Um, tomorrow, Randy Judkins is coming to our school to do presentations for the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And um, he will be talking about some social issues concerning children of our age and that was funded um, by the student council the P parents association <coughs> and by the drug free grant money from the school um, the library has ser recently received a new load of books and on our last dance we made around three hundred and twenty dollars thank you Jean? Oh, excuse me. Uh, Mrs. Pond has a question. What is the theme of your interdisciplinary unit um, this year? Well, it's many things. The, the children, each child makes three choices. There are different classes that you can take for the week, and that is the week of, I believe, parent-teacher conferences. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they will have that class that they picked all day, every day. And then on Thursday morning, um, the different classes that can will be making presentations to the rest of the school. And there are an assortment of different classes mm -hmm. ranging from drama to, uh, say, jewelry making. Yeah, you described that very well, and I, I think the major theme is exploration. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Thank you. I'd like to make one comment, if I may. Uh, my wife just returned from Archangel on Friday morning, and uh, she and one of the reasons for her trip was to prepare for that uh, shipment of humanitarian aid. And uh, so I just wanted to be able to tell you firsthand that she has, uh, uh, can testify that there is an enormous amount of need in Archangel and, and I'm sure in all of Russia. So I hope you'll all make a great effort in the, in the next week. Great. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I'd like to say that the magazine drive is a great success and then we are 34 sales from our goal of 12,000 sales. Um, in the sports, the girls spent 1,200. Um, in, in the sports, the girls' basketball has finished and track and swimming are underway. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Um, Christy? Does the middle school know that there was a write-up uh, in the paper about your magazine drive? Um, I don't know. Okay. I'll get you a copy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> comments from the high school representatives, please. <coughs> okay, um, planning for the next school year has already begun um, where Last week, all the students got class selection sheets um, that were passed out and, and filled out. Um, juniors have begun to work on their college application process, and guidance has been helping us out a lot. And um, the One Act Play Festival is soon approaching. It's going to be held at um, the high school. And Theater Workshop has, uh, throughout the quarter, has been working on their own One Act Play called um, Madman on the Roof. 
Each year the school sponsors a, a retreat of three days for the, this year, the year's freshmen regarding substance abuse awareness. Usually this retreat is held during October, but this year's is being held this week during Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at St. Max's in Scarborough. So far, the students have had a chance to listen to many different speakers talk on a variety of things relative to, to substance use and abuse. And also this year, upperclassmen have had a greater chance to be involved in the whole process as the Natural Helper Program has been able to, to come in, help out doing skits and facilitating and leading some group activities. So it's really been a good experience so far for both the freshmen and the upperclassmen helping out. Um, I have a question, Laurie. Uh, how many of the freshmen attended school Monday and Tuesday to participate in the retreat? What percentage of attendance? I think all the freshmen that came to school actually went to the retreat. But, is that right, Mr. Miller? And 100% of the students came to school? Monday, 100% of the freshmen came to school and 100% went. And I think that that's a, a real good statement. Thank you. I should have asked first, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Next is our business manager's report. Thank you. Uh, the financial statements for month ending February begin on page 66 in your agenda. Uh, the revenue reports to date show that 66% of our anticipated revenues are in. Uh, aside from the state, uh, decrease in the revenues, everything else seems to be on track. The following two pages outline the general program expenditure report for the same period. Uh, based on an anticipated budget of $9,200,000, we have expended $5,009,000, or 64% of our budget. Note that uh, after eight months, there's approximately 66% or 67% of the budget uh, time frame has gone by. Any questions on revenues or expenditures? Under the federal and state programs, uh, to date we have received $146,000 and expended $70,000. Most of these will be expended uh, come FY92 or June 30th. If you note that under the teacher certification grant, the $14,245, I have uh, removed the expenditures to date because we will not be receiving those monies. That's one of the areas the state uh, cut as far as uh, reduced subsidies to, to education. Rosemary. Um, D, is, is that added to the $131,000 cut that they uh, are withholding from January till June? Uh, or part one, of it? No, that's added to it. The 131 or 132 it was uh, for general purpose aid period. This is uh, federal and state grants that will not be received. So do you know what the total of those two accounts or any other cuts that we had? Was it, it was this amount for, you this lost money from the energy account too? Correct. Well, the energy account, the, the monies are not coming in, but also we're not gonna spend the monies also. Oh, I see. So okay. there'll be a savings there of, well, we were getting 50% uh, from the state, or anticipated 50%, and uh, we had budgeted, I believe, $36,000 as far as expenditures, with 18000 as revenues. Thank you. The following two pages outline the food service program. For month end February, we had a decrease in cash of $1,473. February being a short month with the, uh, with the vacation. To date, we have on the, f the following page a fund balance in the school lunch program of a, a positive $3,557 compared to thir a, a loss of last year of $13,257. Therefore, a variance of a $16,814 positive fund balance. Any questions on school lunch? Uh, based on the, the budget process, we have uh, looked at the food service program. In the last two years, uh, the school has appropriated like $25,000 a year. Uh, I believe two years ago, we ended the program with $46,000 in the, in the red. 
to date, the, the program looks like it might break even come June 30th. Uh, the following three pages outline Sue's uh, community services program for FY92. To date, they have received uh, revenues of $437,000 with expenditures of $323,000. I think Sue outlined her program quite well last Thursday, and she anticipates some balance being left June 30th to be carried forward into next year's uh, budget. The last page of your financials are the enrollment reports, and there is no change from February 1st to March 2nd. There's a total enrollment of 1,614 students in the district. Um, April 1st, next month's report will be uh, used in the calculation of state subsidies along with uh, last October's. I do not have an update of the uh, energy accounts because some of the invoices or billings did not come through from uh, CMP and other utilities. I will update those to you in a memo and then update uh, April as, as on target. Any questions on any accounts? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item on our agenda is communications. I have. Uh, okay, Peter. No, I have two uh, items to discuss. Uh, as a result of the, uh, or after the uh, budget hearings, uh, I received an interesting comment that I wanted to pass on to you, and that was, uh, a person told me that uh, not only was that person, uh, but uh, many others were unwilling to speak uh, at the budget hearings because of our television and the bright lights and suggested that we consider not only for budget hearings but also for our meetings uh, uh, in general, our monthly meetings, that we accept uh, questions in writing, communications in writing uh, that pertain to items on the, uh, on the agenda. And uh, the person cited the uh, parallel with the League of Women Voters uh, and I suppose that's done in other forums, too. Um, it, it's, a, it's an interesting comment because, you know, we, we strive to do everything in public, and that's why we use the television, which I don't particularly like either, but, uh, you know, I'm here. Uh, and, and it's discouraging to hear that that actually, uh, in some cases, discourages communication and uh, questions. So I just thought I would pass that on to you. Uh, and the only thought that I have on it is that I don't think it's, it's unreasonable. Uh, I think, however, the, the chairman, who would be the moderator, uh, would, would uh, have to screen those questions. They would have to be pertinent. Uh, they would have to be, uh, they couldn't be accusatory. In other words, a person couldn't hide behind the system to heap abuse on somebody or on the system. And uh, um, so I just pass that on uh, for you all to think about. And. Uh, <coughs> If anybody has any comment, I'll stop here before I go on. Yes, two comments. Uh, One is that uh, w those questions could also um, have the person's name and address, for instance, as is oftentimes addressed to speakers who vocalize their concerns, and that would allow or would avoid the question of anonymous questions that are not pertinent or some somewhat not helpful. And. Uh, that person also approached me, and another thing would be to allow an opportunity for the first 30 minutes from 7 to 7.30 of having board members present where people could approach them uh, individually about issues. And that's just another thought on that subject. Another thing along with that that somebody mentioned to me is why can't we always sit down where we did the other night and allow people to come and sit at the table with us to ask the questions because it's so much less formidable than it is with this kind of um, design. So I don't know the answer to that, if there's a specific rule that says we have to sit here or not. But that was another comment. Well, I, 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 think, it, uh, it, I think I've taken a crack at that in the past and uh, have been dissuaded by uh, both tradition and by the cameraman. But uh, certainly when you have a 25-foot void between us and the audience, and we're uh, under these bright lights, and you're out there in the shade, 
uh, it's not conducive to a free interchange of ideas, but um, and that, that leads into uh, my second point. Uh, uh, Frank Miles, uh, the high school principal, came by uh, and handing out a, uh, uh, a description of the uh, information system committee, which is in formation, and his comment was, was this is sort of like the Supreme <coughs> Court. And uh, <laughs> I agree with that. I think this is uh, a lot of harness for the horse, to use a different analogy. Uh, I wish we could sit down there. But uh, on the uh, Information System Committee, uh, a number of people did uh, volunteer. I don't think we've rounded all of you up, but I did find a message on my answering machine from a gentleman from Unum who expressed some, uh, some interest, who may be here tonight. If you are, identify, uh, thank you. Would you contact Frank uh, Miles, uh, he's right there, and uh, just give him your you know, telephone number and so he can put you on this list. And thank you for, for volunteering and, and the other 10 people or so that volunteered. I think it's a, it's a very quick response to the school board's uh, obvious interest in, uh, in long-range planning for our information systems. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to go back to what we were talking about previously about the formidable um, aspects of this arrangement. Um, we do have a meeting scheduled tomorrow night uh, through the Pond Cove Parents Association for all Pond Cove parents. It'll be at the Media Center at 730, and that certainly is a much less formidable um, place to have a back and forth discussion um, between board members and parents about whatever is on their mind. I would hope we could set that kind of meeting up um, at the middle school and the high school also. So that might be you know, one way to solve a little bit of that problem. It's at the Media Center at Pond Cove? At Pond Cove. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I included in your packet, um, is that on? There it is. I included in your packet uh, some letters. First of all, a letter from Michael McGovern. Uh, thanking the school department and community services for helping with the arrangements um, at the recent uh, funeral for Fire Chief John <coughs> Webster. A letter from uh, parents who have been watching our board meeting from last month who were interested in the discussion on uh, the way in which we're trying to revisit our reading programs in offering their, uh, not only their interest, but their support. Um, a letter that went home to parents from the middle school guidance and administration uh, discussing a recent uh, participation of a random sampling of 30 students in the National Assessment of Educational Progress Trial State Assessment. And a letter from the uh, Commissioner of Education thanking us for allowing Sandy Weiss to uh, take part in a national a uh, project called the New Standards Project. The letter explains that and is a little long to summarize here, but essentially one of our fourth grade teachers uh, has been uh, working on this project, going to meetings, and um, this is a kind of formal thank you not only to Sandy, but also to the school board <coughs> and the school system for supporting that um, effort. And uh, I also want to note that um, Nancy Hutton, our middle school principal, participated in a similar uh, national effort as representatives of the state last summer. In addition, too late for me to include in your packet, I have just received the uh, copy of the eighth grade, um, uh, what was originally billed to be the last of the MEAs, but probably will not be the last of the MEAs. Um, and you will be getting a report, And but since it's almost a month before we We'll have an opportunity to review these. In the meantime, these things do get out in the newspapers. I just thought I would let you know that the news is, is, um, is I think you'll find, rather pleasing. Um, those scores are mostly up with um, two areas at 400, that is in mathematics and science. Um, reading up a little bit from last year, but not at the 400 range. And writing, reading at 355, writing at 330 my bifocals in the right place here. Social studies at um, 340 and humanities at 370. So you'll have an opportunity to get your own copies of those and to see them. But I just thought I would mention that now since it will be a month before we get a chance to deal with it again. 
Um, and I think that is it for communications. Thank you. Okay. Then <clears throat> next is our superintendent's report. Segwaying in. Mm -hmm. Since this is a <coughs> long and uh, packed meeting in other areas, I've chosen not to get uh, into too many areas, but I do want to take this opportunity to uh, update you on the transition team. That is for the move of the kindergarten to the high school, which also includes reorganizing or at least moving around some of our uh, other grades, notably the fourth grade. Um, that transition team is made up of, as a core group, uh, school board representative Ian Chapman, community services representative Sue Weatherby, Pond Cove school representatives Beth Henderson, Lynn Evans, Murray Hayes, and Rachel Clark. Two parents, one parent of a child entering kindergarten next year without children already in the system, Judy Lardner, and parent with child already in Pond Cove School, Peggy Williams, high school representative Rick DeFusco, and two ex officio members, myself and Jan Solon as chair of the school board. We also will be at our meeting tomorrow discussing how we will be scheduling uh, particular focus groups, which will include the first grade team, special education representation from Pond Cove School, and additional representation from the high school. We understand we have students who are interested. Uh, we welcome them. Uh, we will also be talking to any faculty representatives who wish to come, and uh, we will need to be talking and coordinating things with our maintenance representatives. Just to note that the after our discussion at our last board meeting, uh, the note here about scope of work, the transition team is intended to, to provide a forum for discussion of projected needs that will be involved in reorganizing the grade structures. In addition, since there are modifications to the high school building to be discussed, this group will serve <coughs> as a planning group to review architects' proposals and to make recommendations to the school board for final approval. This group will be an advisory committee to the superintendent and the school board, and we will be reporting to the school board through the superintendent at regular board meetings as needed. Question? Are, are we going to have a focus group uh, thing for parents as well? Yes, as and the I'm not. I'm so, it, that's just an oversight. It should, okay. in fact, be on there. Definitely. I, I was just wondering, and when the final recommendation of the sunset on that committee, do you have any idea? I'm sorry. When will that committee end? Is that I would for see September? it as uh, being one a fairly certainly the initial phase fairly limited in the sense that we have to uh, dis make some decisions about architectural issues um, well before the end of school, uh, coming up with a timeline and so on, which we'll be sharing. Um, there may be some issues that cause us to consider uh, having the group uh, meet periodically, for instance, during the summer or in the fall. Uh, that will be determined, I think, in our discussions. Okay, thank you. Okay. School board subcommittees and reports. The first one is a policy subcommittee report by Ann Chapman. I'll make this very short. Um, we, we last met on February 12th and re uh, reviewed sections F, G, and H of the policy manual, so we are actually getting through it. Um, and tonight we will uh, be uh, doing some first readings and second readings of some of the policies we, we've reviewed. Okay, thank you. Finance Subcommittee Report, Peter Leslie. I'm short sure too? <laughs> yes. I, I'd like to. I'll make it very short. Only one item. Uh, as you requested, I uh, approached uh, my counterpart <coughs> on the town council, Janet uh, McLaughlin, who was the, uh, the chairman of their finance committee. Uh, to ask whether or not uh, she thought and her colleagues thought that it would be better to <coughs> leave our budget uh, unapproved for a few weeks until uh, some of the uncertainties were resolved. And uh, after uh, reflecting on that, she called me back and said, no, uh, you really probably ought to go ahead and uh, try to approve your budget as you normally would. Uh, and we understand that there are some variables, particularly on the, uh, on the revenue side, uh, i.e. state aid. So that is my report, and we will, therefore, under 9B, uh, hopefully uh, consider approving uh, the budget uh, with whatever final modifications we might or might not make. Thank you. The next is the Athletic Fee Committee report. Peter? 
Hmm. Okay. That'll be short also. Uh, the Athletic <laughs> Fee Committee uh, met and we discussed essentially two topics. Uh, what sports uh, would be offered and how they would be uh, coached and uh, we did make some changes mostly driven by the increase in our in the size of our middle school athletic population and uh, one change in the high school which is uh, to have a, uh, a girls cross country uh, coach. Uh, we also discussed the uh, subject that had been brought up by a number of people and that is the uh, the question of user fees, uniform fees, fees for participation in sports in a number of different forms and we explored three or four uh, possibilities. We discussed what was going on in some other districts and we basically decided that this time in spite of the obvious budgetary problems that we have that we would like to look for other avenues uh, for uh, financing our athletic programs. So the athletic committee decided not to make any recommendation to the board at this time uh, with regard to uh, this type of uh, fee or uh, contribution that might be made. So uh, that's uh, always a subject that we'll be considering, uh, but uh, right now that was the uh, committee's recommendation to the board. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next is the joint study committee. Uh, we met one more time last week to look at the comments that had been given to us by school board members and teachers. Um, last month we went over the document that was the result of this committee uh, here at this board meeting and did ask for comments and so we discussed uh, what the comments were that had been written and um, how the document might be changed to reflect those comments and then I believe that there will be meetings with teachers to um, to discuss the document and have people from the committee present to give explanations as needed. Town Center Committee, Rosemary Reed. Um, I have no new information uh, to report <coughs> except that the um, there is an inventorying of the Town Center uh, properties being done and recommendations being made and discussions about those uh, recommendations being had and uh, the next uh, meeting is uh, a week from tomorrow. Okay, and community team. Uh, could I get a nod from is the, the next meeting tomorrow or next Wednesday? Next? Thank you very much. Uh, the next community team meeting is March 18th and the items on the agenda are project graduation and the freshman retreat that Laurie referred to earlier that's being held uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow for the freshmen. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. The next item is unfinished business, and the first one is school board policies, second reading. Okay. On uh, school properties disposal procedure, I brought this to the board's attention at our last meeting yet um, nothing has changed so and it had to do with item a and disposable uh, who is going to be responsible for disposing whether it was going to be the board as a whole or the board's finance subcommittee and I thought the understanding would be it would be the board's subcommittee Thank you. Okay. any other comments about that, Rosemary? Yes, I just have a, a comment. Could we um, please include in the administrative guidelines for discussion on this the way the municipal side handles their disposal of surplus property as well? Just in, in the booklet in the back where we have administrative guidelines. Because last year there was a, an extensive uh, change made in procedures that could be helpful um, to be uniform throughout the town. Any comments about the other policies for the second reading? Additions or? Okay. Well, why don't we vote then on these policies? School properties, disposal procedure, allegation of harassment, physical and or, or sexual abuse, and safety program. So moved. Okay. Second. Further discussion? 
All in favor? Okay, thank you. The next is application for school construction project. Okay. You have already indicated it, uh, the special meeting held after a workshop in January as to uh, which application you wanted to put in under a regular project that was a middle school project. Uh, and you chose the project that is partial new construction, renovation, and ultimately some uh, demolition of the current building. Um, the timeline for that is April is submission to the state by April 15th and the uh, preceded by a vote from this body as well as a vote from the town council. And the interesting timing issue is that the town council meeting is a day before the school board meeting and if we wait until April for those votes, um, I either have to ask somebody to meet out of sync uh, so I'm bringing that to you now, even though I won't be asking the town council to visit the proposal until their April meeting, which will should be insufficient time for us to get it to the uh, state. Uh, all of this is by way of explanation to tell you uh, that I do not have all the paperwork in place. I thought you'd be interested to see how extensive it is. Um, and since it's substantively an issue that you are already on record for, I feel comfortable in asking you to vote on it, even though I don't have all the uh, blanks filled in. As you can see, there are two pieces here. One is a project application school construction, and if you look at that, I've given you, that's the white, your white sheets. Um, the questions asked are a brief statement of need, brief description of project, a rationale for each school building in the district, um, which includes such things as description of the building, how old it is, number of grade, um, grades in the building, number of pupils, uh, et cetera. In other words, uh, background information as well as current enrollment. Uh, I think the interesting question from a substantive point of view, explain briefly how this project will meet program needs in the following areas. Enhancement of existing programs, creation of new programs, and provision for extraordinary programs, and some of that you have uh, in your finished, um, that part is finished. The pink sheets are much longer, and if you'll notice, it says pre-application planning for school construction. Historically, until a few years ago, it was the white sheets that was all that we had to put in. But what they found was that the pressure on school construction projects was so great that they really wanted to sift out some projects that came in with little or no planning and encourage boards to do um, and to actually spend some money on pre-planning before it actually goes to the state. If you have had a chance to look through this, you will see that, um, frankly, I'm going to be taking uh, sheets out of our uh, finished study report, this school space study report, um, because they asked not only for detailed questions about the physical condition of each of our current buildings, but they also asked for enrollment data, both past and planned, which again is part of that report. They asked for uh, who are the groups or the individuals who actually were involved in the planning process. For us, that's uh, clearly the school space study uh, committee as well as yourselves as a board and we have at least presented some of the issues and discussed them in general with the town council. We'll be going back to do that again. Uh, we have uh, in the process talked to groups of teachers, maintenance people, um, as well as in, in some cases uh, holding hearings or at least meetings where the public was invited and we've talked to parents. All of that has to be documented as you can see plus um, a variety of questions about the school system's philosophy, the kind of programs that we are looking to enhance with this particular um, application, and there's even a page on soils, topography, uh, and potential public use of the proposed facility. So it does take a while to pull it all together, and I just wanted you to know that it is in process. Uh, you can see what it is. It will be finished in ample time for us to make sure that you have a copy as well as the town council before we ask them for a vote. But since you've been attending the meetings, you know the content of the report, I felt that I could ask you for a vote on this. Okay. 
Do I hear a motion to instruct Dr. Goldman to proceed with the application for the school construction project? So moved. Second. Further discussion? Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. Since we would not be meeting again to, to go over the final report, I might ask <coughs> to amend that this, the uh, Finance Subcommittee review it before oh, it's um, presented to the Town Council. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will amend it to say that she can proceed with um, the report with the understanding that the Finance Committee will review it. Okay. Um, under weaknesses, could you add lack of water? At the portable? Oh, yes. That actually gets mentioned in there. I'm sorry. Uh, in fact, one of the, and I forget now which, these two reports are redundant. There are questions that are the same in each, and of course, um, I'm always a little amazed that we can't just take the finished report we have and submit it with a few cover sheets, but um, that does not seem to work. So we have to make sure we get, I get the right pieces in the right place here. But I know I did uh, write up a piece about the waterless portables in the um, science program. Uh, and I have a wonderful memo from one of our teachers who's dealing with science classes uh, describing uh, the kind of effort that has to go into dealing with a regular routine science, what should be a routine science lesson because of the lack of that facility. I'll include that in the uh, packet. And the last question, um, Connie, will this be ready by March 26? By <coughs> our, uh, oh, you mean our workshop with the uh, town council? Uh, I would think so. It's, there's a lot more. Actually, some of this is just to be copied or about the only, the only thing we don't have the information on uh, readily at this point so that it can just kind of be slid in there is the soils and topography, and I have to ask the architect to help me with that one. I think so, yeah. Thank you. All in favor? <coughs> okay, thank you. The last item under unfinished business is request for job share teaching assignment. Um, we've had several discussions about this, um, and I'm going to ask the board once again to table this because I have discovered that it's very difficult for us to come up with a a uh, final uh, clear set of guidelines until we actually sit down as a policy group and um, uh, frankly we have not yet completed that process um, and this is not just from a board point of view it's also I think uh, taking into consideration the teachers they may in fact uh, when we get through with the guidelines find that there's some areas there that would um, perhaps make it not in their best interest to pursue with a job share. So in all fairness to everybody, uh, I have discussed that with the teachers. I have discussed it uh, with you. My recommendation is we table it tonight and uh, complete the process in April. Is that agreeable? Okay, thank you. New business. The first is a personnel request a resignation. Included in your packet uh, an indication that one of our veteran teachers is has given us her indication to retire. Priscilla Magellis, who's been teaching in the uh, middle school um, special education department for a number of years um, and certainly will be missed, has indicated her intention to retire at the end of this school year. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept the resignation of Priscilla Magellis? So moved. Second. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Next is the discussion of the board's recommended budget for 1992-1993. Um, the way that we will do this tonight is that um, the board will discuss um, the items that are left um, that need to be answered and talked about further. And um, that, was, that. that was a computer. <laughs> that was the budget that, turning that was on. The budget. Um, and, and then there will be time for people from the community to come forward and comment. And we'll do it. Um, well, there's really only one section at this point. If, if other sections get added, we will uh, include those for discussion as well. The, the, the area that was left unfinished that started as part of our formal budget was, is integrated arts. Um, 
and the proposal is to eliminate the staffing position, move the visiting artists into the music and art periods, and form a committee to further develop and refine our arts program. <coughs> is there any discussion from the board about this proposal? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just start by saying that I've talked to um, probably at this point 50 people about this since last Thursday, and um, the response is really overwhelmingly positive to, to go ahead with this change with the understanding that um, we that we do incorporate the goals of the integrated arts program into the regular arts curriculum. Okay. All right. I've had 14 phone calls, and two said, please don't cut, and 12 said, we understand you have to do it. Basically. All right. Then uh, we'll go to the audience and ask, are there community members that wish to comment upon integrated arts? Would you come forward to the mic, please? Uh, my name is Carla Bernstein. I currently have a kindergartner at Pond Cove and a preschooler. And uh, I, too, certainly understand the need to do this. And if the goals can truly be integrated into the curriculum somehow, that could be a positive thing. I would only like to point out, particularly at the kindergarten age, where there's so much more going on besides academics, there's a lot more to school for a kindergartner than academics. There's the whole issue of a positive introduction to the school experience gaining self-esteem, gaining confidence, um, socialization skills. I could really go on with adjectives for a while. <laughs> but I think that my point and my concern is that when you get to a point where you cut a lot of the so-called frills, you might say, well, this one's OK, and we can integrate it here. And this one's OK, and we can integrate it here. My main concern is when you cut too many of the so-called frills, there's a cumulative effect, and after a while, a great school system becomes a good school system, and then a good school system becomes a mediocre school system. And I think that even in these times of economic hardship, we can't lose sight of the fact that there are a lot of important so-called extras that are really more than just frills. They are truly a part of the school experience and are fairly important. And I would hope that if this cut does go through, that some real attention is paid into how to incorporate a lot of this program into the current music and art. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments from the, the audience? Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Leslie Knowlton and I'm a second grade teacher. And I just want to speak in behalf of Gretchen Berg and what she has done for our class. She's really turned our entire class on to dramatics. And they're currently writing plays in their journals and they're um, acting out everything. Gretchen has spent extra time with many children in our class. What she has done, she spent her free planning time and worked with small groups of children and helped them produce a play. And they in turn put their play on for our class. I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Uh, I've been up here a few times before and I've decided it's about time I let people know why I have such strong views about things. I grew up in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Everybody knows Chelsea, Massachusetts, I think, by now. And we had a lot of things in Chelsea when I was growing up that got lost along the way. And when I had my children, I sent them to parochial school because I couldn't go anyplace else. And it was better for them to be there, although the education wasn't the greatest, but it was better than in the public school system. A little bit along the line, I moved them to Malden, and things were a little more improved. And I had a son, Danny, who was now in the fourth grade. He was in what was supposed to be gifted and talented. Two years ago, all that got slashed. They decided we didn't need nurses in the school full-time anymore. We didn't need secretaries anymore. 
We didn't even need a library. We didn't have a media center. I stood in a closet and handed out books with some of the other mothers. And I think that if I sold everything I owned and gave up living near my family to move my family here, and I am going to be living here and it's going to turn into a Chelsea, then it's unfortunate for all of you because I've already lived it. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. Um, because this has been a proposal, um, I, I will ask for a vote on it. Um, do I hear a motion to accept the proposal um, as stated a minute ago to eliminate this position? Um, move the artists into the music and art program and form a committee to develop and refine our arts program. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? Charlie. I would just like to make a comment. Um, the elimination of this, this, this position is really not ref a reflection on Gretchen Berg's work because she has done an outstanding job and I would like to, if this is passed, would like to see her utilized as one of those um, um, contracted um, artists to come in and to continue that work because if, if, if it is that important, a strand to some of the, some of the um, grade levels and curriculum that I would like to see it continue. Rosemary. Um, I do want to support that point because in all of the calls and the personal contacts that I have um, made or have been made, everyone always said, but can't we keep the teacher? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, at our workshop, Gretchen Berg made the comment that this, the, the dollar figure for visiting artists in the budget reflected half of, half of the students not a full number. Uh, should we adjust that figure or are we just saying that we only want to serve half the students each year and try to work from there? It, what it is is $1,500 um, per grade level. Right. Um, and, if I, and if I was reading the proposal right, um, part, part of Gretchen's time included teaching integrated arts classes. Um, the point I tried to make in my memo was that I that I believe the nine thousand dollars is adequate funding um, through the budget process, and that certainly um, they could seek money through grants or the Ponco Parents Association um, for additional uh, funds. And I and I also think there is a wealth of uh, of uh, talent out there in the community. Um, I've had many phone calls from parents seeking to come into the schools and, and help with the arts. So I think um, the arts will be well supported. Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other comments from the board um, about the budget? That was the only item that really was left open as far as uh, the formal budget uh, before we vote on the budget as a whole, Anne? Um, I, I had spoken to Connie before and asked if we could have some sort of a plan or outline of what would uh, happen um, after the gifted and talented position was eliminated at Pond Cove. Okay. We do have a very simple outline um, <coughs> administratively, but I think that I can summarize uh, as quickly as uh, handing anything out. The issue of cutting that position, as I understand it, the position was originally a part-time position expanded to a full-time at the four or five level uh, two years ago. And that, uh, that part of the expansion was in a, to enable whoever took on that uh, position to have a three-prong program, or at least to facilitate two of the three prongs. The idea being that the regular classroom would support much of the standard program and then there would be a reasonably large group of youngsters on a free choice basis or at least an enrichment basis uh, do, dealing uh, with short-term classes almost like units and then the three to five percent of the identified gifted 
um, certainly during the discussions we had about that program last year, it became clear to me that part of what was going on was that we, and it certainly has been borne out by the D community dialogues and other discussions we've had with parents um, this year, <coughs> that there is a real uh, sense in the community that we ought to be raising our level of expectations, generally speaking. It is one of your board goals for this year to work on that, and it certainly um, it comes up in a lot of discussions. Uh, this would seem to imply that we need to take care of what was called level two or the general pull-out enrichment kind of uh, extra pieces through the improvement in the regular curriculum, which leaves us with a uh, need to provide services for the three to five percent, at, particularly at that grade level in the um, math and uh, uh, language arts comprehension and writing. Um, also, of course, with some of the efforts that are being made um, through the arts program. This one, uh, we have, that's why I put money in the budget to uh, enable us, if need be, to do on a tutorial basis, on a small group basis, um, certainly with an accelerated group in math, and some uh, attention to accelerated group in reading comprehension. It is our intention at this point to cover the pullout group in math with our own staffing. We see some possibilities. Our staffing at the elementary level is not complete. It won't be until we go through the general budget process and ultimately um, find out exactly who is going to be with us next year. But we have some good possibilities. Another issue that became clear this year is that when you have a, a really full separate program in the gifted and talented, one of the um, anomalies we were looking at is the uh, uh, necessity for somebody now teaching that math GT to know the Chicago program. We have made a real effort at the beginning at the sixth grade level to have an accelerated um, um, access to uh, algebra and now geometry at those grades. So if we have a gifted and talented strand at the four or five, we certainly need to have somebody dealing with it who is um, uh, able to and, and uh, is, uh, has some background in that. Now, I certainly recognize the teacher dealing with this year um, got right on that and was, was coming up to speed, but at the same time, we see it as something where it should not be a separate curriculum. It should be an issue that may be pulled out and may be accelerated, but is connected to what is going to be coming on. Uh, it's less of a problem to make those connections as far as uh, language arts is concerned because, in fact, there are there's, uh, the uh, advanced junior grade books. We have had some discussion about looking into a program known as Philosophy for Children, uh, but certainly it ought to be a component of um, rigorous reading comprehension. Those things are uh, our intention, and again, I just repeat, it would be pull out. It would be for 3 to 5 percent identified. And it would also be, uh, could be tutorial, it could be uh, both small group and one-on-one. -on -one. But our, uh, my anticipation would be small group. What is being eliminated by eliminating this uh, position is the larger enrichment strand that I believe the original proposal called level two. That will not be possible under, that will be what will be lost with this cut. Will there be a particular staff person who will be overseeing this, do you think? Well, we certainly need to uh, obviously have somebody who is uh, involved with both, and it would be um, the, the math strand will come from somebody who's dealing with our math strand, the language arts, obviously, um, both in-house people, and again, I go back to my um, suggestion of some consultation and tutorial and at the at the last uh, budget workshop or two budget workshops ago we had talked about the possibility of forming a committee um, yes including uh, parents we have to do that I think this is uh, this is always there it's going to be um, Nancy I know there's a group uh, on March plan. 17th Our, our parents are going to be invited to that or involved in that uh, in some yeah, way? Parents are going to be included in that advisory group. I'm not sure that that will happen on the 17th, but I know that uh, parents are going to be included in uh, framing what will happen for them. Okay. 
child? I need to ask Nancy a qu another question. <coughs> she gave me a confirmed figure of 49 children who are now being serviced in four and five. What, what number are fifth graders going into sixth grade? So there will have to be some reevaluation of those uh, 29 students by the middle school program. How are they going to handle? Uh, I would uh, probably ask uh, having to address that the students entering the middle school to look at what the um, uh, criteria might be for them to be able to access some of the programming that's there. But Because that would be that would be an increase in the number of children you're now servicing because you have 29 seventh graders 18 eighth graders and about 13 sixth graders i'm talking about nancy's program remember too though we have 19 other sixth graders in our math program um, in our transition math program and actually tomorrow afternoon we're having a meeting where we're going to address particularly the issue of mathematics and jill is going to come to our meeting and talk with us about what kinds of projections we might have for those students that she's working with in math. And those, that's where you have the 19, Jill, is that correct? And we'll be looking at offering at least one transition math class for sixth graders. Uh, we anticipate we'll also have some incoming sixth graders who will access our algebra program as well, too. Mark? Well, one of the things that uh, Dr. Goldman mentioned being cut, essentially, in this, in this process is the level two service. And I, I think that we need to be very cognizant of what it is that caused the development of a level two concept. And that is there are a very large number of kids in our system who are not being challenged by the current curriculum that's available to them. And so there are a number of children whose needs are currently being met in, in, by this position. One of the, from the math side of it, a class of transitional math certainly will help to address that at sixth grade level. However, I th the language arts is less clear in my mind how that group is going to be serviced. And I think that we need to be very aggressive about being certain that all those children on, who are on the high end, but perhaps are not in the three to five percent, receive challenging material so that they, w their needs will continue to be served even though we don't <coughs> have it in the budget. And I, I, I really, we've talked for a long time about raising expectations uniformly across the board and certainly that will address some of it. However, I think that we need to be conscious of providing some other type of enrichment program that is not a three to five percent talented program that probably all children can access, much like the Wayne Fleet system that um, received a lot of good press recently uh, through the Atlantic Monthly and then through our own nurse newspaper setting, where children who choose to put in more time into the language arts will be able to really um, expose themselves to a, a greater workload and to a greater breadth of challenge in language arts. Other comments? Are we taking the entire budget for comments at this point? I think first I'll ask if there are comments from the audience on this particular subject. My name is Gail Darling, and I have a fourth grader and a sixth grader. Um, my fourth grader is being currently served by Jill Bell's efforts in both math and in language arts. He was identified by the school as being one of those kids who needed some special help. And I have to say that I have never been a proponent of gifted and talented. I have always believed in trying to mainstream kids, in trying to increase everybody's expectations. But I have to say that my child this year has blossomed unbelievably. He has gone so much faster, he is so much happier, that I think we should be very careful about cutting this position. And I'm not just speaking for Jill Bell, but in general, we should be careful about cutting the position before we have something in place that really will, will provide support for these kids who, who, who do so well under it. Thank you. <coughs> uh, 
I also have to comment, especially about Jill Bell, because um, I think she brings out a lot of good in children. And, chil and there are a lot of hard feelings sometimes for the children who were in the gifted and talented program, in the level two, in the three to five percent. And I hear you referring to the other children. And I know there's a real problem because there is, you know, there's too much of a span. But sometimes the three to five percent are also denied the right to be a little bit brighter, a little bit bored in school. People look upon them as something to envy, something to be jealous of. They wish their children were those children. Um, I called several mothers today. I was afraid that some of them didn't understand that today they could speak. And some of the comments I got, and one real sad one was, a little boy said, Mommy, I wish I wasn't smart. Because when I give the right answer, people expect me to. When somebody else gives the right answer, they get a pat on the back. This is not the way for my child, or Gail's child, or anyone else's child to have to feel. They want to work hard. They're waiting for people to give them something to challenge them so they too can get a pat on the back. I can always give my child a pat on the back. He knew that from the day he could understand. But other people have to remember the special needs child needs it, the average child needs it, but our children need it also. And I moved here expecting it here. I could understand a little more the problems there were where I came from. But here, I think you're sacrificing the gifted child, the bright child, and you will sacrifice the average child's education and the special needs child also because you're going to make divisions among the parents if you cut the people that are needed to teach our children. I know that Jill Bell may be a name, you know, I mean, I am sure that if somebody replaces Jill, you are going to do the best you can to give us somebody who will do well. But our children have been able to blossom this year. And I waited for a whole year for this. And I will fight, and I hope you don't lose patience with me, because I will be up here every minute I have to be speaking not just for my child, but all your children, because I'm afraid that this community does not understand it will affect all your children if you don't take care of all of our children. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. Now I'll open it up to items about the budget in general. Could I, co could I comment on that? Um, the gift and talent. Um, I have a question. Uh, if the fifth grade becomes incorporated into the middle school next year, are they going to be able to have um, math cross grade opportunities, do you think? Maybe. <laughs> Ask later. <laughs> I like the last part. Okay. Ask later. I, I don't know. That we would have to investigate that and offer that. That's something we offer as standard in the middle school. So we would have to um, look at that. There's, I think, the proposal that Connie talked about, about using other personnel to meet those needs. Um, transition math seems to be appropriate for some sixth grade students, but even in all the material that the University of Chicago puts out, they don't talk about it for fifth grade students. But there are certainly other accelerated math programs and things that we could look at for them. So I don't know an exact answer to that. But we would certainly, wherever they are, in the elementary school or the middle school, develop a program to meet their needs. So what you're saying is that the Chicago um, math program would not meet the needs of a gifted child in math? At, in fifth grade? I, I don't know. It, it might. We'd have to look at that. In the materials that they put out, they talk about that it would be appropriate for a small percentage of sixth graders, a larger percentage of seventh graders and, and eighth graders. And it might turn out that, um, Charlie, we have some tests that we've developed that Charlotte Hanna and Mary McGuire have made up to go along with the Chicago program and some of the materials that the company has itself. And we would look at all of those things to see if that was the good match. It might be the appropriate match. It might not be. Um, we would have to find what that program was. Mark. When the 
subject of voting on the budget for today's <coughs> meeting came up, my biggest concern was this issue. And the reason why is I'm uncomfortable uh, uh, in acknowledging a specific need within the school system and not having it clear to me how it's going to be filled, especially with the absence of a known position, a known commodity. And I understand the need to go forward with the budget cycle today so that we can provide the town council numbers um, to work with. However, I, I would really very much like to have something on paper, something that we can review as a school board from administration to determine whether there is a package put together that's going to address the needs that have really been clearly addressed here by both school board members and by the community. And I, I think it was subject to review by the school board that we find that to be an acceptable response to service these children that clearly need it. Yeah. I agree with what um, Mark, Mark said. Um, I think we really need to sometime fairly soon have, have a plan in place. It does make me uneasy not to have any plan. Um, it also brings up the, the point of I really think we need to uh, make a decision on where the fifth grade is going to be next year. We have an awful lot of questions that are related to that that are just left hanging um, until we make that decision. I think we really need to make that decision soon. Um, I already made the decision. I just want to vote on it. Uh, <laughs> um, is there any chance that we could uh, put that position back in the budget um, if we have to vote on something to send instead of I, if we vote excuse me we voted on a separate item to eliminate a program earlier this evening mm -hmm. um, there are two positions in addition to that one that we're eliminating are we going to take each one of those positions separately in the discussion and if the vote fails to make that cut can we add that back into the budget and then perhaps there will be offsetting but uh, cuts well the the plan was to um, because there was only one area which was integrated arts left to discuss as part of the formal budget to vote on that and then vote on the budget as a whole um, you know, if we need further discussion on that, I, on this item, I guess, I guess we ought to take it. Um, but uh, are there other comments from board members as far as Rosemary's comment? Anne? I think I'd like to just turn around what Rosemary uh, said and have some assurance that we might have a possibility of reinstating that position if it looked like we really needed to. Rather than putting no. it in at this Right. I mean, I'd like to give I'd like to give the administrators a chance to come up with a reasonable plan with the position eliminated. Um, I don't know if that makes much sense, but mm -hmm. well, I think past history, if I may interject, uh, indicates that uh, when we pass a budget, uh, in this case, uh, in the vicinity of 9.4 million dollars, uh, in about 60 days or 90 days, they're going to be uh, a lot of things that are slightly different and uh, we have in the past reinstated programs we've added programs I can't recall if we've actually taken them off uh, but uh, try <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna try again okay so you see where I'm going uh, it, it's, uh, we, we could leave it as you suggest that uh, after we know what the situation is then we can uh, you know revisit this and decide if that has a higher priority or if indeed the funds for that have uh, materialized from some change in uh, the situation well I think above and beyond that I think when the administration and Dr. Goldman brought that brought us this budget that they didn't just willy-nilly cut a position and say we don't care about these kids at some point we'll figure out what to do with them I think I think there is a process in place and a plan and that certainly the intention is to take care of these children um, I agree that at some point we need to see that plan but I think it would be wrong of us to just stick the position back in against their recommendation I just have a comment on that with all due respect um, I believe that sometimes uh, high administrators and 
uh, building administrators are forced to do something based on the parameters that we set, and that may not be their first choice. But we don't know that. I case. know, and that's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there any other comments? Charlie. Rosemary made a good point about the fifth grade. I think we do have to make a decision as a board. Uh, we've heard the recommendations of the superintendent that essentially this be a transition year and that the fifth grade stay with the elementary, even though the fourth grade is going back back to the, uh, the elementary building. If there's, if there's a feeling or consensus of the board that maybe we need to make the changes in the coming fiscal year, maybe that needs to be discussed and voted on. I'm wondering, since this is particularly a budget discussion, if we need to stay within those parameters right now and, and make that an item for next month? Or I, think it is, I think it does have budget ramifications because it puts a grade into another building, which will then tax their, um, some of their services. And one of these is going to be the gifted and talented program. Obviously, that is one of the anticipated nuts and bolts issues uh, for the transition team. Um, frankly, I know I did say at some point that um, because we were trying to handle so many issues here, I wasn't convinced that we needed to make a clear-cut decision for next year on actually naming 5 through 8 and K through 4, although in effect, we're clearly moving in that direction because we are going towards a building uh, project that is a 5-8 project. The question in my mind was with the, uh, there were just a whole lot of changes going on, some of them budgetary or budget driven at least, some of them space driven and so on. Uh, however, we've also internally had some discussions about that since I made that statement and I'm perfectly willing to consider that this may in fact be the neatest, cleanest way of doing it. But I also see the transition team which we'll be discussing, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to list nuts and bolts issues to uh, come back to you within a fairly short frame of uh, time as we work through it through to see if maybe that does make the most sense. Um, where we are such a tight little group, I mean three buildings or two buildings that you can virtually uh, reach across, uh, and they've been very fluid back and forth, and it's sometimes unclear to me that it makes a great deal of difference, but I realize that there are certain nuts and bolts daily issues that make a lot of difference to the people involved, I need to make sure that those are raised to my attention as well as to yours. Um, for instance, going back to some of the issues that you're concerned about, the gifted and talented, I can certainly appreciate that what we're saying about this provision and that provision is not as clean cut as talking about a full position. However, watching this full position for two years, I have to say there have been a lot of uncertainties for these two years. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about exactly what it is the board intended to accomplish with that and our, our uh, youngsters' needs being met and so on. So it's really not quite as neat and clean. Clearly we brought this in as a fiscally responsible attempt to look at a variety of areas, some of which we started to look at last year, to say, frankly, uh, you know, no, we're not necessarily saying that all of these things are, are absolutely uh, uh, ideal but they are an attempt to deal with uh, prime needs in a way that we can uh, assure you will be done responsibly and um, make some fiscal decisions. Um, and I, I think that we can do that. Now, one of the things that hampers a discussion about grades four and five is that we have a fairly large pool of teachers at that grade level, all of whom are certified to teach any of the grades. We are not dealing with a high school where we only have one or two certified biology teachers or chemistry teachers or what have you. So that uh, elementary staffing is traditionally a little soft at this time of year. We may well have teachers who A, uh, move, or whose family move, or who become frankly pregnant, or decide they want childcare leave, or a variety of other things that traditionally mean that it's hard for us to assign classes and if we bring the budget into you in January or February and say absolutely this is the assignment, this is the staff person who will be dealing with that. What we do see at this point is the capacity to deal with some of these specialized classes. And what I've seen happen in the last year is a distinct evolution of an attitude towards math that is 
uh, trying to deal sensitively with early specialization. Uh, and clearly that makes sense to me to focus our thinking about accelerated math programs at the fourth and fifth grade level to be looking at some of the tie-ins with what's down the road. We don't want to do something at the fourth and fifth grade level that isn't going to fit what is likely to be the programs at the sixth and seventh grade level. So we have to think, work our way through that. We've made some changes in the last year. We expect to see some changes again for next year. Uh, but it is, I can appreciate it is difficult for uh, you, you naturally would like to see all of this spelled out. We would too. And in our heads we have the capacity to do this even if we don't have the absolute, can't tell you who the staff member might be. Um, other than that, I don't know what I can say tonight, although I'm certainly willing to get the administration to pin down, for instance, what we can do um, with the help of the staff that's dealing with the issue right now is to look at exact numbers, exact recommendations, who are we talking about ongoing from fourth to fifth grade. Um, the sixth and seventh and eighth grade is a different kind of program anyway, and I think that perhaps is a kind of specificity you're looking for. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to point out, though, that the transition team does not have any anything to do with whether the fifth grade moves or not. No, but, in, but inevitably, when we start looking at the impact on the fourth grade, which is moving, yeah. and that that leaves a fifth grade behind, I'm sure that will get discussed and will help us sort out what are the, what are the issues, for instance, uh, once we re remove the fourth grade, what does that mean from a nuts and bolts point of view with separating fourth and fifth grade? So it will come up. So are you saying we really need to wait for the transition team to come up with that before we can talk about it as a board? I'm just really no, reluctant necessarily. given, um, you know, doing, doing away with the gifted and talented program and hearing that if the fifth grade um, is going to the middle school, it's kind of fuzzy about what you would do about the math area. Um, I, I, just, I just don't want to get in a situation where we have so little time before the school year starts that the program is really not appropriate and up and running for these kids. Mm -hmm. Well, we had difficulty getting up and running this year. Uh, I think well, that the, uh, and that again is tied to the uncertainties of going from one year to another. So, I mean, again, we, these are not issues that are necessarily tied to that decision about the fifth grade. My understanding was that the question about the fifth grade math is not that there's so much fuzziness, it's just that the University of Chicago has not yet come out with a math program for the fifth grade so that our own staff would have to develop something that would segue into transitional math in the sixth grade. And, and I, I would think that well, I, I want to know who is responsible for sorting that yeah. through, basically, and um, all these issues through. And, and I would feel a lot more comfortable if I knew it was either Pond Cove or middle school and not maybe it'll be this, maybe it won't. I want the appropriate people to be thinking about those issues mm -hmm. right away, um, not at the end of the school year. The point that is most critical to me is the allocation of resources. Uh, just continually from parents I hear that we aren't offering enough resources to that group of children in our school system. And that's the manner by which the board and the public addresses that is through the budget process. And so I, I'm not interested in having a, a schedule that says Mr. or Dr. So-and-so is going to teach this class at this time. That's not at all what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is some type of plan, the one that you're talking about that's up here that I'm, that I'm not familiar with, that will be able to say this is, this is our plan and these are our resources and this is how we can allocate them to service this group of children. Because uh, my greatest concern is that with the difficulties of startup as we have seen in other years that you have referenced, that it doesn't start up and that uh, we know that resources are tight but I don't think that we can accept not having those resources for this group of children it's just something I'm not comfortable accepting within our budget cycle so what, uh, what I would request is that we have something um, for next school board meeting certainly not in concrete doesn't have to be timed or, or with clear positions but a concept of where the funding would come from, how they would be serviced in general, that, that we could understand, that I could understand. Okay. I truly think the staff is up to bringing something 
quickly or getting on board quickly. Um, in the proposed eliminations of the life skills help uh, position and that curriculum and trying to retain certain elements of the health curriculum, I attended the middle school um, curriculum committee today and I was very impressed about how quickly they're getting on board as, as, a, as a school to find out what areas they feel are important in the health curriculum and where they think that they can be integrated into what is now the existing curriculum. And, and they're going back to staff to see and get staff input and then meet again. And, then, and, and I think it can be done, but um, I'm, I'm with Mark. I feel very uncomfortable and I've been in this position before and there are other board members who have been in this position where a elimination or a change in a program was suggested and it did not get on board as quickly in the fall and we had to readdress it several times and, and it is a skip and tell the strand. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Other comments? Well, well, since Charlie brought up the life skills health, um, I will also say for the third year, <laughs> um, I understand that at the uh, health curriculum meeting that was held this morning that uh, aspects of how to incorporate were included. Um, Nancy addressed the Middle School Parents Association today about some of the ways that that will be done. I'm very concerned about any time being taken away from physical education courses for first aid or any other health um, because all the studies I've read and including the one that was in the USA Today uh, yesterday um, talks about how physical education is critical to keeping the mind uh, keen and I just happen to be the mother of a 13-year-old um, boy who will do almost anything when phys ed is on his schedule and he's uh, less inclined to be so anxious to get to school um, when some of the other subjects are there in that time slot and I think that he's a pretty average standard uh, kid and I think it's very important also, uh, the physical education program that we have is, is not an extension of athletics and it does offer uh, a totally different focus. Um, I have uh, done extensive uh, research on the uh, nurse educator's position in the uh, three different schools and although at this point I am not uh, going to press for an uh, increase in the number of hours uh, that are spent uh, in that regard, but I think with the movement of the kindergarten to the high school, there are going to be demands on the um, high school nursing staff. There are going to be 60 additional students uh, system-wide, and I think that since it's a budgetary item, we might want to consider putting additional money aside. I know I keep adding money, but uh, additional monies aside in uh, consultants um, fees in case uh, Nancy were to need uh, either anyone need uh, additional uh, resources for uh, incorporation of the sex ed or the AIDS or the uh, STD discussions or uh, any of the other ones. I believe the alcohol and drugs are pretty well taken care of with Quest and DARE, but uh, there are still um, places that we may need specialized training that may require someone to do something that isn't part of their regular routine. Other comments about the budget? Charlie. I have one other concern, and um, there's been a proposal to, because of feedback from both parents and staff about the half days and the use, and the use for <coughs> development time, I'm strongly for giving teachers time to do staff development. Um, I I concur that I think those half days, which meet the state requirement of two and a half hours, are, are ill served to the students. Um, accordingly, the superintendent has added funds to, to help staff, some kind of staff development that would be ongoing when school is in, 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 in place. And she has also kept the uh, two teachers, teacher aides that we approved as a, as a special request. Also, uh, since we have increased that, that area of the budget for staff development, you know, I would really would like to, s to see what kind of a plan or some kind of an outline of a plan that she plans to use. Are we going to reduce um, half days completely or, or are they 
I'm having a little trouble with that. That's all. Yeah, well, all of us will be. Uh, that is that's a, a tough issue, which is why I've been trying to at least service the issue. But I uh, I have to say that's a calendar issue. It's also one that is an advise and consult with the Teachers Association. Uh, we are in the process now as kind of a sidebar to the negotiations to try to have some uh, small subgroup committee work going on. As you know, I think you're meeting in one of those groups. Um, and I am at least suggesting that we can we can do some problem solving through a kind of advise and consult role with the Teachers Association. I do hope staff will get interested in this. I mean, it's easy to say uh, it's, a, it's a tough issue. We don't want to take staff development time away, but at the same time, we, I certainly adhere, as I know uh, board members here, in fact, I'm sure some teachers here, uh, concerns about parents, about loss of instructional time and so forth. Uh, well, how do we solve that dilemma? And I am suggesting that there is an opportunity here for both the staff and certainly parent input if people are willing to come forward and um, and uh, school board to look at the issue uh, and see if we can at least try some pilot things. That's what I put the money in there for as a kind of substitute uh, cadre, even if we reduced workshops by a couple of days and, uh, and substituted those hours as instructional time, but with some re planned release time for um, for teachers, uh, it's not that's not a very elaborate thing. It doesn't require a huge. Pro what it really requires is both staff and school board and community discussion about how badly do we want to uh, look at this issue. Um, I mean, if everybody's happy with the way it is, fine. But not that's not exactly what I hear. So that's why I put the money in the budget so that it would afford us an opportunity to have this discussion. Yeah, I, I have gotten just. Uh, countless comments um, from parents um, complaining that uh, not only are there the early release days, which means not much happens on those days by virtue of them being so short, uh, but it affects the day before the workshop. Um, we have so many weeks that are short for because of a holiday or a workshop day. We just don't have that many full weeks of school. Um, and, and I think it really is worth exploring whether there are some more creative ways to um, get the staff development time and keep the kids in school learning um, for more extended periods. And this discussion will go on as part of calendar, is that right? That's correct. I mean, the, the uh, workshop day is in fact one of the uh, teacher pupil days. It's counted as a day of school. Yet, it is, of course, one of the ways in which we try to uh, afford staff development time. I mean, it's, and so it becomes a calendar issue. Okay, I'd just like to make one comment as the board's uh, spokesperson uh, with the uh, teacher's bargaining unit of the uh, Education Association. And it's really to re reiterate what you said twice earlier, and that is, this is an issue in which the teachers and their association want to be and I think have to be involved and I, I'm just really repeating for the third time what you said earlier uh, to make sure that if somebody just turned on their TV uh, or turned it off uh, <laughs> that the message gets out that we do want to involve the teachers in this process of planning. I feel that I've been remiss if I hadn't uh, on the behalf of the fifth grade team shared a letter that uh, uh, Nancy Hutton and I are sure if it was addressed to Nancy Hutton or to me it, it, it simply says dear Nancy and they were both <laughs> in, our, in our boxes and, uh, <laughs> so I'll share this letter with, with the board in, in, on, uh, it, it does speak about the uh, concerns that the fifth grade team express in regard to the early release days and perhaps the uh, cutbacks some suggestions they do offer some suggestions they're they're in support of um, continuing with some of the early release days so that they feel that they're not entirely eliminated uh, but perhaps rearranging the time during the uh, of the calendar when they might fall uh, teachers if you recall last year there was some discussion uh, with the board about when the days might be and uh, what might be most productive work time and so forth and we had agreed at some point to try this year um, early release days. I think they're, I believe there are 
five that fall on Fridays prior to vacations or long weekends. Uh, the teachers were not particularly uh, in favor of, of that proposal, but graciously agreed to try it. They find that that is a less than productive time for them. While some families um, perhaps use those days as extended time with their children, there are uh, more children leaving early those days or not coming to school on those Fridays than in previous, previous time, and I could provide with some statistics on that. Uh, so I wanted you to, to have this, this correspondence and be able to just give you some frame of reference here from Thank teachers. You. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Other um, comments on the budget? Charlie? Go ahead, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, the uh, fuel oil accounts uh, continue to nag at me. Um, one of the suggestions I made to the business manager and the superintendent was we actually fund the fuel oil accounts for contingencies. That is that the winter is the worst it could possibly be and that the heat needs to be at a certain level and that we will have no s snow days or whatever. Um, so I think that there is a little bit uh, of money in that account for contingencies and I would just propose that we consider moving it to the contingency fund which by the way I think is too low um, and identify the fact that it is in the contingency for fuel uh, and uh, it, I mean it's a very valid reason to have it I'm just suggesting that when it's in the uh, fuel oil line and there's twenty thousand dollars unused at the end of the year uh, the comment could be made that uh, it's an overfunded line. I do have a comment on that and uh, on that type of account in general. Uh, it's a valid point. You could probably go through our budget and find uh, any number of accounts for boiler repairs uh, for uh, fuel oil and uh, you could strip some of that out and put it all in contingencies and you could probably uh, double the contingency uh, account by doing that. I'm not sure that you accomplish a lot, uh, but you could do that. I mean, I think there's some other items, some of them, uh, you know, you have uh, um, identified at, at other times. The question is, do we want to do that? Uh, do we want to have a budgeting system whereby we only place in the accounts money we're 99 percent sure we're going to spend or do we uh, look at uh, our historical experience do we look at uh, the worst and uh, best cases and put numbers in for these various items such as fuel and boiler uh, repairs which may or may not be needed and you could make the argument that no matter what you will do that anyway because to arrive at an appropriate contingency account, you're going to have to look at oil and say, after the election, the Saudis will stop pumping as much oil as they are now. At least there are a lot of political pundits that feel that's going to happen. The uh, world economy will start to recover. That will put pressure on oil prices, and they're going to go up. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would be you know, appropriate. So you'd say, well, we need $10,000 for that. Put it either in the fuel oil account or put it in the contingency account. Essentially, that would still be an amount in fuel oil. Now, since we close our books at the end of the year and turn everything back to zero, it really doesn't, to me, make a whole lot of difference. Uh, but I could be persuaded if, if the board felt that a larger contingency account uh, was more appropriate for what I think you're suggesting is essentially political and cosmetic reasons that people will pick us apart bit by bit because this account will not have uh, been fully used. On the other hand, some other account might be negative. So Peter, I mean, the, how do we feel? The other point I was going to make is that we have made little um, efforts at conservation and I also think that as we take a look at the budget, if an account looks like it's approaching being uh, used up or overdrawn, then we might also give more careful consideration to it. And I, 
I, I don't know if I was politically motivated, but I certainly think uh, that it needs to be there. But I think we're budgeting in that account for contingencies. So I, my feeling is I would just be more comfortable to put it in the contingency fund. I'm not suggesting uh, cutting that uh, out entirely. You know, there'd be another way to handle that type of account, incidentally, and fuel oil is a pretty good example. You could simply buy futures what you thought you were going to need, and you could probably hit the, the gallonage within a 5 or 10 percent, you know, either way, and that would not be particularly significant if you had to unwind the contract, either for you or against you at the end of the period. Uh, that might be, uh, again, to use <laughs> what I said earlier about this podium or whatever this is, uh, dais, uh, it too much harness for the horse. In other words, it m <laughs> that may not be worth, uh, you know, the trouble. But it's another thing that we could do. Other <clears throat> comments on this? Charlie. I'm more concerned about transportation than gasoline. I mean, I believe that we are not utilizing what has been budgeted. We have bought a new bus. We've eliminated an old bus that has helped our helped our um, economy a little bit. Um, the price has been down, which has helped us. We're proposing to buy another bus, which we would then retire an older bus. So that should again help the savings and usage. Um, we're going to be looking at routes again with um, the approval of Sue Weatherby taking over uh, supervision of transportation. I still think we need to revisit, um, we eliminated some bus runs in the afternoon by combining the high school and the middle school. I think we need to revisit, because of usage, the same <coughs> as far as the morning pickup. And I think eliminating those, that extra run will also realize us some savings. And I think we need to look at those, and I think those need to be reduced and, and eliminated not transferred to contingencies, but eliminated. I think what bothers me is the superintendent has done an excellent job. This is the second year of coming in with a, a budget which has really looked at things realistically and has tried to, to, limit, to minimize the amount of elimination of programming and not just doing flat cutting of whole programs, and she needs to be commended for that, and the staff needs to be commended for that. I think, in reference to the comment about the political nature, we have also had some years where we have gone to the town council with a budget which we felt and were led to believe by, by the, the superintendent and, and, the, and the staff at that time that this was a bare bones budget, this was the least that we could could cut to to uh, to meet the needs of the town, and in fact, there was a lot of padding still in there. I know that's a term people don't like, but there were a lot of, of over budgeted items, and I think the the town council has a long memory. And even though we have come in, we came in last year with a much less percentage, and we also had an agreement with the with the town council that. This is the kind of the target range. Well, this year we're going in with, with no target range. But I think some of us are getting some messages from the town council that they are expecting us to come in at a zero, zero increase. And I think we have to make some kind of attempt. I think Ann's proposal, though it's not motivated by uh, monetary savings, but more, I think, curriculum has, has realized some savings. And I think if we can make a few of these type of things to reduce the impact on the tax rate, it still bothers me that we're going in with some capital expenditures that I think we're going to have to come back and somehow, if the town doesn't approve our proposed tax impact on the tax rate, that we're going to have to look at these. Um, the school bus has the approval of, of the state to, to be funded, to re be reimbursed on a, on a three-year term. So I don't think that the council will have a problem with our going out for a short-term note. I think that we need to make some preparation in possibly funding some of these other uh, capital expenditures, which then might help to reduce our budget to get it down to a re you know, near a zero tax break. I think we need to discuss those before we approach the council. I just think we need to make some attempt 
even though the superintendent has done an excellent job. Comments? For the record, I submitted mine in writing. So Charlie, are you saying that right now you, you think that we should make cuts to get us to I, zero? I think we've made one tonight because that's uh, essentially, a, what was it, 21,000, 20, or close to 20,000. In the elimination of Gretchen Bird's position, that, that's a $20,000 reduction. I don't see that as being a transfer to, to contingency. From my point of view, I see that as a cut, and as a cut, a cut in the budget. Is that the number that you understood? Because I afterwards Would I, be her I was. Uh, it, that's not. That's not okay. That that is not. Uh, we sh we should have incidentally. We should, if we have any further discussion, when we make a motion, uh, we should say that this represents a cut or an addition of X amount of money. Because otherwise, I can't keep score and tell you what the effect on the tax rate is. So what was that cut in? Uh, well, uh, there was, to me, the d there was a difference between what was in the budget that we were presented with and the proposal that Gretchen gave us. We're protecting the $9,000 uh, for the visiting artists. That was, that was a figure that came from Gretchen's proposal, so um, I don't know quite where, where that fits in because we were using both the proposal yeah. and, and the budget. Maybe Connie has. D. <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, actually, the salary <laughs> count is eighteen thousand three hundred and forty-eight dollars. Fringe benefits are one thousand two hundred and sixty-five dollars. To me, that's nineteen thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars. Twenty thousand. Uh, okay. Uh, we would. We do need. Sorry, I was okay. talking it to. It would be uh, a salary of eighteen thousand three hundred and forty-eight dollars. It comes from line number eight seven one five one one zero. Fringe benefit element of that is 87151210. That is $1,265. I believe it adds up to $19,613. Good. I, I put in 18. So Wait a minute. Now I'm going to turn this back on, right. and I apologize for the noise. As soon as I get home, I will disable it. I don't know. It didn't make the little Beethoven's fifth opening. But did that, but did that include some of the visiting? I, I think that it was that very confusing. The it, way it was. I, th I really think we have to go back to grand zero here. In the sense, on the integrated arts, the budget I brought in had eliminated from this year's program a 20. Well, it had it actually left what 23? Is that was was that the original figure? 23. That included some monies for artists and residents and Gretchen. Now. In the course of reassigning this, if you, what you have done, in essence, is with this proposal, is to cut a contracted position. Now, Gretchen is a teacher on continuing contract. And when I get into the later part of the agenda tonight and, and just kind of recap what that means, uh, what you are proposing is a cut in a position. Uh, in this case, it's a specialty situation, so there certainly it would appear to be a connection between the person and the position, but she is a teacher on continuing contract, and you have eliminated that, contra that contract position. The proposal she brought back in, in response to an initial board discussion of further cuts in the integrated art, is eliminating her position from half-time or reducing it from half-time to one-third. And reassigning some of the rest of the money that was in the integrated arts budget for visiting artists. Uh, what this proposal does, and I think I'd have to sit down and really take a um, walk my, my way through some of those figures to make sure we can give you an absolute accurate figure, is not reduced the amount that was in the budget by 20,000. It may have reduced it by some, but it has not reduced it by 20, because there was only 23 in there to begin with. What should be remaining, though, is $9,000. Then we have reduced the difference between 23 and okay. 9. You also have supplies budgeted. Which was a $4,000. $3,430. Professional services, $650. And the rest of it was salary. So if, if her proposal was to come. Excuse me. Here, just come this was the initial right. request. So this is the bottom no, line. No, I understand. And then that. her proposal 
was confusing because she didn't have the supply figure in there, and people were saying, yes, it isn't one figure. It's, you should have to, if the supplies are needed anyway, then they, in fact, have to be added through. Um, but um, so it is both more than, you know, you don't just eliminate this. No, I understand. There's, there is. But um, there, there, there is a cut, and it's at least half. Yeah. What, yeah, what, what makes sense to me at this point, so I can try and figure out where we are, is I'm going to ask for a vote to accept the budget as it is to go to town council and see where we stand on it. Do I hear a motion to, to approve the budget as written to go to town council? Okay, I move we accept the budget at nine million four hundred and seven thousand. Uh, as submitted by the superintendent. And I must say I'm at uh, a little doubt as to whether or not it's been just amended downward by 14,000. Um, okay. Can anybody clarify that? Uh, okay. If I had another, you made a comment too in our, when you were presenting your business report that it appeared that the food services would end at a zero balance. Is that taking into consideration that we no longer, that we will need the $25,000 subsidy for next year if, if they come in at a zero, they are not going to need $25,000 next year or are they going to need it? You had led us to believe at one of the budget meetings that, that Based on a memo I, I, I gave you people last Thursday, I believe, uh, the request was scaled down. Okay, so scaled down. You said 10 to 15. You didn't give us any specifics. I mean, if, if we're going to scale down the subsidy, that could be another 10,000 that could reduce. I believe, I believe the request in that uh, four or five items I gave you people was a request of 15,000. Okay, so to reduce the twenty-five thousand to fifteen, so again that would be another ten thousand. I know these are piddling amounts, but no, to me when you get that at the end, Charlie. This is what we're looking for. <laughs> so, D, what you're saying is uh, we should take out, as of this moment, if I were formulating this motion, uh, an additional ten thousand and an additional twelve from the integrated arts, giving. The budget as it stands now, nine million three hundred and eighty six thousand. Okay. okay. So that's that's the So motion. then I'll make that my motion uh, and we'll uh, and then I get yeah, I'll just make that as my motion and see if it has a second. Is there a second? Can I second? Okay. Budget fails. <laughs> <laughs> Only the proposal. <laughs> Only the motion. Uh, then I guess as an alternative, you might uh, uh, ask the uh, the members to propose uh, cuts and additions, and uh, vote on those individually. And I can keep telling you, I can keep a tally up here and tell you what the uh, the increase uh, or decrease, the effect on the tax rate, <coughs> as of of the uh, a moment ago. The total increase in spending would have been uh, just slightly under 
and the effect on the tax rate would have been uh, four percent. I seconded that motion. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm not sure it's going to pass anyway. Well, <laughs> I did second. Oh, I thought you, you were the chairman. I'm <laughs> prattling on here. <laughs> so I will, okay, I'll ask Ben for further discussion. Rosemary. Are you looking for cuts? No, I'm looking for, well, no, I'm looking for further discussion on the motion. Can you, you can, uh, you can move to amend the motion, can't you? Mm -hmm. I want a new one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, then let's vote on this one. All in favor of passing the budget as is, raise your hand. All right, now let's go back to the drawing. All those opposed? All those opposed. I, yeah. All right, so let's start. Rosemary. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the four coaches in the middle school and the uh, head coach at the um, high school was approved and allocated funds in the budget. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start with the fuel oil account. <laughs> Just, I mean, I've already made my proposal about transferring some of that fund to the contingency. And um, I also uh, would like a discussion about taking $5,000 out of the uh, gasoline transportation costs. Okay, your, your first doesn't affect uh, expenditure, does it? No. It's just. Uh, but since we're moving money. Uh, on the fuel oil account, the fuel and utilities, I believe last Thursday, I provided you with a three year spreadsheet as to, it's $201,000 as to what's been allocated in the budget for the past three years and what's happened. There will be a balance left in the, in the fuel oil account. However, based on, on the past three years issue that I did provide you people is that the utilities account will be, have a shortfall by about the same amount of money. So what I've suggested or recommended is that we reallocate the dollars to the appropriate accounts. Therefore, the, the, uh, the balance that you see as a unexpended balance in the fuel oil accounts will not, will not exist because that line next year will be decreased according to what we need in the utilities account. It's, it's like a wash. And this is based on, like I said, uh, 89, 90, 90, 91, and 91, 92 history on, the, on our accounts. Is our goal right now to try and get this to a zero increase? Is that what you're in spending? Pardon? In spending? On the tax rate? In spending. In spending. Okay. So how much does that mean right now, tonight, that we have to cut to do that? $180,000. More than that. Actually, I think that's Charlie. about right. My comment was mainly to make an attempt. I'm not, I don't think that we can do it, but I would like to make an attempt. So I think that puts forth some kind of a message to the town council that we did look at some areas. They may be minute, but we did look at some areas. Loretta. I, I think we're, we're skipping a procedure here. I think it's perfectly fine to hand in the budget that we would like to see in place, knowing that probably it will be cut some more. We have not officially been told that they want a zero budget. I think we're, we're, I think we're guessing at something that we shouldn't be doing. Because I think if we handed in a zero budget, they might want us to have a minus 2%. So why don't we hand in what we feel like is right and, and then expect or go prepared? And I think this dis discussion has been good because I think it lets us know some of the areas that we may, in fact, be cutting soon. And, and go in there with this budget or with uh, this, nearly this budget and uh, <coughs> cut later if we're asked to. Well, I think Loretta's making a good point, and I, I guess I would just, uh, uh, recollecting my conversation with the, uh, the chairman of the Town Council Finance Committee on Sunday, uh, we, we discussed the fact that this year is significantly different than last year. Last year, a 5% a cap was uh, clearly communicated to us. And this year, uh, we've gone back to the more traditional format of the school board preparing the budget that it thinks is necessary to fulfill its, uh, its academic mission here in this town. And it may be that 
uh, they will uh, have a different view than we do, and they may send us uh, back uh, to try harder or however you want to express that. Uh, but I think Loretta's point is uh, is really a good one. This is uh, it's not up to us to take do the town council's job, which is to establish the tax rate. I mean, they're the ones that say effect on the tax rate should be X or Y, not us. Yeah, I, I do think though that we, you know, we are part of the town and, and I don't think we should wait for the town council always to tell us what to do. I, I do think that we should um, make the best faith effort we possibly can to get the budget um, where we where we want it and, and not worry about them asking us to cut it more. I think we should do what we what we think is, is right and I think it, it should be as lean as it possibly can and if people have um, ideas that we should be looking at for making it lean, I think now is the time to do it. I think earlier was the time to do it, to be honest. Now is the time as well. But we had a number of workshops. We went through all of this. Um, I, I just think it's it's kind of like, you know, hurrying through something to try and, and make some final decisions when we've had a long process to try and do this. Well, uh, no, that, that's, that's really not true because we left the last budget meeting not expecting to um, adopt the budget tonight. Um, and we, we have not had an opportunity um, to really hash out these last issues. Um, I, I, with, with all due respect, I think some of our budget meetings were a, a little bit rushed. Um, and I would, have, I would have insisted that we stayed longer on Thursday if I had known that we weren't going to have the opportunity to hash all this out tonight. I think so. maybe we should have had our Saturday workshop. I, I agree that, that uh, we did not come prepared tonight to vote on, on the budget. But we were asked to do that by town council, which is why it came up at all. Charlie. I would like to revisit gasoline. The deal was to get back to me about if I know there are some areas that are over, they've been budgeted over every year, we have not used them. I think that kind of budgeting has to go the way of, of um, an arc. It has to go. We have to be zero based. We have to, we have to go back and look at how we, our usage has been and we have to, to budget you know, as close as possible, and I think you know we can do that because we have we have the the aid of computers, we have the aid of we definitely put in some better programs, you know, in the central office, and I think we have those forecasting abilities. Um, I think these are little areas that we can revisit. It has nothing to do with cutting programs, but I think there are still some areas that have been over budgeted, and we need to look at those. Well, remember that this year we're ending with. Uh, uh, we're projecting, I, I shouldn't say that, uh, we hope we will end with $35,000 in cash. That is not a very large margin in a budget this size. If you could answer my question about the gasoline. Did you look at that account? I, I did revisit the accounts uh, based on, there again, I think I, I went to a three-year uh, history on it. Uh, last year, I believe, due to price increase, due to the, you know, the, the activity of the Persian Gulf and all that, we did spend like $22,000 in the gasoline account. This year, compared to two years ago, when prices were stable, our anticipated expenditure this year was like nineteen dollars to $21,000, the same it was two years ago. Uh, possibly, there, there could be some movement there, Charlie. I mean, and, and we're still looking at transportation issues as far as when school is going to start for all for all kids, namely you know, the the uh, K through 12 program next year. Uh, I mean, uh, I believe in, in the three-year uh, uh, spreadsheet I've given you people. Yeah, uh, there is there's room to move there, but then again, uh, see, they, gasoline you did not give us those figures. I don't believe well, you I looked at fuel, oil, and electricity, but I don't believe you gave us. I thought I gave you three-year spreadsheet. I know I got it. That's fine. You can move on. Okay. Other areas. <laughs> you can try a motion again. I mean, if there's okay. no more discussion. 
Your yeah. turn, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to clarify, what is the bottom line you're using? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the same one in the last What was the total time? spending? Well, my motion was uh, 9,386,000. 9,386? <laughs> That was a reduction of twenty to twenty three thousand. I think that's an iffy reduction. I think that what I'm concerned about is you voted on that proposal based on another proposal which had a um, a flaw in the not adding in the supplies, and I think we need to go back to our original uh, figure, which was a considerable reduction. The figure we brought you in the original budget was a considerable reduction from this year's integrated arts. The proposal that we came back after your initial discussion of integrated arts with, uh, that we'd sat down with Gretchen, which was a redu reduction in her position, but not an elimination of position, uh, was a 22,000 uh, roughly figure. But then again, there was arguably the supplies left out. Um, and what, after looking at this proposal, I'm not absolutely certain, although I think it's clear that that is, leaves in 9,000, period, right? Or does it leave in the 9,000 plus the supplies? Did, did you ever get a list of what the supplies were? That seems like a lot of supplies. Well, there is, it's a background from the original budget. So if we were to estimate that that's about a 4,000 figure, then the 9, 4,013, that's a reduction of approximately 10,000, rather, or possibly 11. I mean, I know that there's another couple of pieces that I don't have. So we're actually talking about, my, I, I think we're talking closer to somewhere in the 10 to 12 range. Okay, with, I have the, I have for the integrated arts. Because of this proposal that, that you that, just voted right. into, that, that's what I have. In Is here. that what you have in there? Yes, and then I okay. have ten thousand for food service, and uh, okay. I uh, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in that uh, with increased number of students, but uh, okay. Maybe. I just wanted to make sure that we were re relatively within the ballpark there. Okay, let's. I'd like to make a motion to accept the budget as stands with two amendments, uh, subtracting twelve thousand dollars from integrated arts and ten thousand from the food service. Do I hear a second? Second. Further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? You know, wasn't that the motion that I made a little while ago? <laughs> but somehow we all feel better because... <laughs> okay. Can I just say one, one thing about that? Yeah. It, it appeared to me that, that other school board members still had something they wanted to say, and I, and I thought they you know, have, should have an opportunity to do that. I, That's that why was my I no vote also, is that people were in mid-sentence and they, they had more to say. It wasn't much, but they needed to get it said. I mean, it was important. I <laughs> thought that much. they would say it during the further discussion portion of yes. the vote. That would work All right. Thank you. So much for our parliamentary system, which is intact and yeah. working well. <laughs> Going along. Okay. New business. Consideration of the superintendent's nominations for continuing contract teachers. Oh, thank you. Back on track here. Okay, um, this is the. I just want to preface uh, this motion with a couple of pieces of explanation. Number one, um, the Cape Elizabeth con teacher contract does call for notification of employment status by March 15th, which is why it comes in at the March meeting. I have asked um, for the negotiations process to review that because, frankly, I don't know why we're doing it March 15th. Teachers who are on continuing contract by statute uh, must be notified of any non possibility of non-renewal by the end of February. Teachers who are probationary on a first or second year employment status uh, must be notified by state statute again now by May 15th. March is somewhere in between, and it doesn't seem to me that it serves any particularly useful purpose for us to have this particular date. It does require some um, 
uh, double notification in some cases. For instance, this year we're in negotiations with all our units, and uh, we are we send out uh, the per the process normally requires us to send out a salary agreement sheet, and so we have to send out this year's salary with an asterisk saying pending negotiations, and then again uh, down the road send out another notification. So I'm hoping that. Uh, that through the negotiation process this year we will sort of clear up this March 15th date but that's a little editorial comment at the beginning the second thing is is that the two lists in front of you are teachers who are first year to second year and teachers who are second year uh, nominated to go on continuing contract now I also want to make it clear and I will be discussing this again both specifically with um, uh, representation from the Teachers Association and through notification to teachers that given the budget process, given all the uncertainties of the budget process, only some of which have surfaced here tonight, we, we need to remind ourselves that we don't really know what we're going to get from the state. We certainly don't know what the bottom line is on the um, uh, from the town council. We had some discussion about that tonight. Therefore, I will follow a practice that uh, is followed in times like these. All first and second year teachers will be receiving notification that they've been nominated. Those people on this list have been nominated, uh, and but pending employment uh, uh, due to economic circumstances. So that we have a situation here where we've been talking about cutting some positions, and you see the names of staff members who are currently holding those positions on this list. That is because when you are dealing with cuts in teaching positions, we have one strand of discussions that is uh, actually the position itself. That process is not finished until you have a final budget approved by the town council. So although we notify people that this is a recommendation or this is something that you as school boards are adopting in your budget, we still have to go through the final funding process with the town council and have a bottom line before we know whether we have those positions or not or in fact may have to lose other positions. Therefore, um, the, the separate strand of staffing are those people who are been here a year or been here two years who the administration is nominating for a second year or, or, or probationary, but is not in and of itself a, a guarantee of employment. I hope that's relatively clear. I know it sounds a little muddy to me as I'm saying it, but I know that these things are confusing. Nevertheless, I just want to make that point uh, if it's, uh, I think, important for people to understand. So we have two lists, in, uh, and I think your practice has been to give two separate votes. Um, can, the first one would be for those teachers who are second-year teachers going on continuing contract. I might also note that that decision covers a number of people. Uh, the state uh, uh, cutoff point for notification is May, and sometimes we do continue a process. So we may have some teachers who are not on this list who will be brought back to you at a later um, meeting. Do you want me to read the list? Uh, yes. yes. Second year probationary teachers, uh, excuse me, teachers going on to continuing contract. Sandra Wiest, Andrew Lomack McNair, Jill Bell, Rebecca Wing, Sarah Berman, Mary Ellen Tracy, Patricia Monterio, Joyce Bell, Pamela Rawson, Heather Tangway, and Jacqueline Petrillo. Do I hear a motion to accept these teachers for going on to continuing contracts? Yes, I, I move to accept these teachers going on to continuing contracts. Second. Okay, further discussion? Uh, just a question of clarification. Um, if a position was eliminated, since most of these teachers are certified K, K-8 or whatever, oh, um, would that allow them to to, to reshuffle? Our contract does not carry language for bumping rates. Okay. Uh, our contract, um, however, uh, I have to tell you that some of these things get complicated and we really have to go through the process before, um, before we actually know how, in fact, some of these decisions play out. There is a... Um, uh, our, our contract has language for determining how the teacher to be affected in a given cluster is determined. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Okay, thank you. The next one is consideration of the superintendent's nominations for second year probationary teachers. 
And that list is uh, Georgina Zimprich, Susana, Wilma Maramontes, Bill Brewington, Susan Richmond, Kurt McCandless, Tracy Hyde, Marianne Dowry, Beth Ann Dixon, and Anne Marie McCann. Do I hear a motion to accept these teachers on second year probationary teacher contracts? So moved. Second? Second. Further discussion? It was an early vote. Uh -huh. Vote early and often. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. School board policies, first reading. Are there any? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, on uh, GCE, Long-Term and Substitute Professional Staff Development. In reading the proposed language, uh, my concern is referenced to the paragraph that says, shall be entitled to the privileges and benefits afforded regular professional employees with the exception of the term of employment shall ordinarily cease at the scheduled termination of regular teacher's leave. This is contrary to how we're currently doing it, and I would uh, respectfully request deletion of that paragraph. Comments? Okay. Other comments on that? Okay. Any other remarks about the other um, school board policies? This is the first reading. Okay. We'll bring these back next time for a second reading. And the last item, appointments to Community Services Advisory Commission. Uh, one is two reappointments for a second term and one new appointment. And the two re um, the two reappointments for a second term, Don Moore Roy and uh, Cindy Landrigan. And the one new appointment uh, taking the place of Sue Mitchell, whose appointment has expired, is Ernest Loxy. And I apologize if I have not pronounced that correctly, but I believe that's a correct pronunciation. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept Don Roy and Cindy Landrigan? Uh, to reappointments for a second term. So moved. Second? Further discussion? I'll second it. <laughs> now, are you voting early? <laughs> no. No, she was trying to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Okay. Can I, can I just say one thing? I did have my hand up for a reason. Oh, for, oh, okay. Don Roy is a neighbor and a friend of mine, and um, I know she's, uh, she has really enjoyed serving on this commission, and um, we're lucky to have someone of her caliber on the, on the commission. Good. Thank you. Um, and do I hear a motion for Ernest Loxie to uh, be a new appointment to this <coughs> commission? I move to accept Ernest Loxie. Seconded. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? All right, that concludes our school board meeting. Um, our April school board meeting is April 14th at 7.30. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor. Okay, thank you. I would just like to call your attention. I see Sandy voiced out in the I didn't see you earlier. Uh, Sandy is the teacher who was referred to in the letter from the commissioner. You might like to ask her a little informally about, you won't have to be televised, uh, about her trips and, uh, and some more about that project. The program notes were written by Michael Steinberg.